All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to calculate the deflection of this truss that's subjected to a single point load. So in cases like this where we have a truss and a single load acting on it, we can use our virtual work method, which uh, I'll show you here in a second. It only works if there's a single load. If you see more than one applied load, don't do this. It won't work. But typically in mechanics and materials, you're going to get a question like this, at least on an assignment or a test, where um, you're asked to calculate the deflection at the point of the applied load uh, when there's only one applied load on a truss. So in this case, we're looking for the deflection here at B. And just so you know, it will be going in the direction of the applied load. So if you remember from the last couple of videos, when we were talking about the uh, strain, elastic strain energy due to an axial load, we had this expression here that was P squared L over 2AE. Well, it turns out that if you have uh, more than one part of a system, like a truss here, uh, you can just sum up all of these guys and uh, you'll get the elastic strain energy of the whole structure. So uh, where this was, this was the simple case where we had an applied load, uh, an applied axial load. So the internal force was the same as the applied load. But what we want to do where we have uh, a truss like this is the internal load or the internal force in each of these members is not going to exactly equal the applied load in the structure. So maybe what we want to do is we just want to change that to the internal force in each member. Actually, sorry, I said we have to sum these up. So we take the sum of, now we have the internal force of each member, square that, the length of each member, and, uh, and then again, the cross-sectional area of each member and the modulus of the elasticity of each member. So usually these three here, L, A, and E, are all given to us. For example, they are given to us in this problem. The only unknown in this expression is the internal force. And we can simply do a little bit of statics, uh, probably with the method of joints here, uh, to figure out this, uh, this variable. And then we can easily calculate the total elastic strain energy. Now, if you remember from a previous video in this section, uh, we also got this expression here. Uh, it was elastic strain energy is equal to the integral from 0 to x1 of p dx. Again, this was dealing with uh, the axial load example. Uh, but basically, we, we worked this, and you find that the elastic strain energy is just equal to 1 half p1 x1. Right, so this is basically just one half the, the applied load times the distance that the load moves. In the, in the case of a simple rod elongating, it was elongation of the rod. Now, in this case, uh, we can apply this to our scenario here. And uh, we're actually, instead of having the elongation of a rod, we're having the vertical displacement that the load travels through as we slowly apply it. So basically, for this situation, we can rewrite this for this video as the elastic strain energy is equal to one half p our applied load times let's call this vertical displacement at b let's call that y b right we've just replaced these with our applied load and y b and once we find the strain energy then we can just reorganize this so we get y b is going to be equal to two elastic strain energy over applied load Awesome. So now let's do this example. Uh, we want to find the internal forces here. So let's use the method of joints at B to do the sum of forces in the y direction and sum of forces in the x direction. And we're going to find the internal force in member AB is 62.5 kilonewtons, and that is in tension. And the internal force in BC is uh, negative 37.5 kilonewtons. So that negative just indicates that it is in compression. All right. So what we want to do now is we have everything we need for this expression. So we want to basically just take the sum so we'll have the internal or sorry we'll have the elastic strain energy the total elastic strain energy is going to be equal to that force a b squared times the length of a b and that is just divided by two times the cross-sectional area of a b times the modulus of elasticity of a and this is uh, these are for all of the members in the situation. Um, now we also have plus the internal force here of uh, BC. That's all squared times LBC. And then we again we have two times ABC 
times EVC. Now, in this case, this member here is actually a zero force member uh, because this guy here comes in totally horizontal or perpendicular to the wall. It's not providing any uh, vertical reaction or vertical force. The, the roller support here is not providing any vertical support. So this guy here is a zero force member. So really, you could, you could add in the term for AC, but AC is just zero because the internal force in AC is zero. So we don't need to include that. So if we just fill out all of the knowns that we have here, then we can go and start canceling units. So we have meter squared, meter squared. So let's cancel those guys. We have one Newton on the bottom and two on the top. So we're going to bring this unit of Newtons down to one, but don't not square the 62,500. So don't forget to bring that in there. Uh, and then same thing on this side, we have meter squared, meter squared, cancel that out and don't not square that. This is going to leave us with units of uh, Newton meters plus Newton meters. That's great, that's exactly what we want. So that's going to give us, if we crunch this uh, each term one by one, we'll get 8.14 Newton meters plus 2.93 Newton meters. And Newton meters is also the same thing as the, the units of joules, but basically we just get 11.07 .07 Newton meters or joules. And that is the total elastic strain energy that we have in this entire truss system. Now what we want to do is we want to bring that into this expression here. So we have, um, uh, where is it? We have YB is equal to two times the elastic strain energy over the applied load. So we get this is two times 11.07 .07 Newton meters. And that is all over the applied load of 50 kilonewtons. So that is 50,000 newtons, and that's going to give us our YB, which is our displacement, uh, as 0 0.44 millimeters. So there you go. That is the answer. That is, oops, I want to draw a box around that. I don't want to draw a line through it. <laughs> 0 0.44 millimeters. That is the displacement uh, at point B here where we have applied this single point load to this truss.